Can't believe it. Here we go. We've made it to the old Telegraph track. Surely it's got to be Australia's most iconic track, if not very close to. Maybe I should have just brought a boat for this track instead. <laughs> oh God, help me. sign when there's a number for towing at the crossing. Alright, packed up camp, first crossing of the day which is this creek we're camped on. There's a few options, we're going sort of like the deeper one but also the smoother one. They just take it nice and slow through all this stuff, like there's no need to panic and speed it through. As usual, you got a whole crowd watching you at every crossing. <laughs> Through all that, we'll keep heading north on the telly track. That was quite a big hole I came up through there. There was an easy option around there. All right, I've hit the next crossing, only a few k's down the road, which is Sam's Creek. There is a bit of a shallower line around to the left if you want to sort of creep up around the trees and drop back in, but I'll go the deeper one just for a bit of excitement. Sam Creek done. Having a swim here at Sam's Creek, so it seems like telly track life is drive for half hour to an hour, do a couple of creek crossings and then pull up a one and swim for an hour or two. It's so warm out here and there's just the uh, creek's just absolutely beautiful. There's a uh, secret slash not secret because everyone knows about it waterfall just down there we're going to go for swim down at in a minute but we're just having a little muck around this top one creek crossing just a short little deep bit and then up out the other side we're just taking it nice and slow through all these i'm in preservation mode 3000 kilometers from home and the next crossing this northern section of the telly track is definitely the better one just the, all these creeks are amazing, it's just sort of nicer area. But in saying that, the southern section's also really good too. Cannibal Creek, I swear this one's called from memory. From memory of watching videos of it, not from me actually being here. But we've dropped down a, yeah, Cannibal Creek. We've dropped down a bank there and then looks like I've got a deep hole and then you swing around and pop up out the other side. Now we've got a bit of an exit up out of here, kind of lands you into the bank. It's a bit muddy and sloshy and a few uh, wombat holes there to contend with as well. We'll just crawl our way up out of here but should be all good. Well, there goes that mirror on the bank. Let that suspension work and the locker. Definitely going to struggle on that without a locker or a heap of suspension travel. You're going to have to send it up there. <laughs> 
Most of these creeks have a numerous exits in and out of them. That's the only exit out of that one. Quite a few flexi wombat ruddy sort of sections through the bit of road between that last one, Cannibal Creek, and the next one, which I believe is Cypress, which is that rickety old <laughs> wooden bridge you gotta drive across. Now, tire pressures for this track, I've been running number 15 PSI, the whole track, which gives plenty of bag, gives plenty of grip on all those creek crossings. That seems to be working really well. And then just before anyone asks, the tire size is a 28575R16, they're Falcon Wild Peak Mud Terrains. Mm -hmm. And then it is a two inch lift. It's got uh, the long travel shocks in the rear. This bridge actually looks messed up. <laughs> Wow. It's just pure sticks. You're going to have to try and guide me. We need to put wheels here and wheels there. We can't go in there or the car's going through the bridge. Wow, is this thing for real? Has anyone been across this? But that is, I, I'm, I'm literally barely stomping and it's shaking. <laughs> I'm not even like trying, I'm just like going like... Look at all the logs washed up over time that other people have used here. Is this bridge for real? Is this bridge for real? The middle of it there is sort of collapsed in. You've got to put a wheel obviously on that side and a wheel on that side. It doesn't give me confidence that I've got no one here to guide me except Kai and he'll probably just guide me straight into the creek. Mate, remember when I was trying to guide you and you didn't follow my guidance and then you ended up in a hole? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> didn't trust you. <laughs> so I really need to make sure i got a tyre up on that there. Dude, I'm not good at guiding. Yeah, well. And I've got to put a freaking car on this. Dude. It's just going to fall. There's a horrible idea. Nah, there's no other way. Not feeling great about this here on my own. How am I looking? Am I lined up? You, you, like, you could turn a little bit that way. Should I have a seatbelt on? Maybe. How am I looking? Yeah, it's still pretty good. Keep going forward. Oh, God, help me. Stop! <laughs> oh, wow! Is this kid for real? Too bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Did I prank you? Yeah, ultimate pranking. <laughs> Stop! That's always a good sign when there's a number for towing at the crossing. This one is uh, really deep, I think. So, yeah, this is definitely the deepest <laughs> so far. This one's over waist deep. I've seen this one before. It's a very deep crossing. Bottom seems alright though, so we just have to plow our way through it. You ready for this deep crossing? Yep. Try not to flood the car. There's tracks over there where people have sort of ploughed their way down vertical banks, but it looks very, very muddy there. It looks like you just get bogged there. That way isn't, a, isn't as deep at least, but yeah, I think we'll make it through. They're all good. Even that's like still a bit deep. Is it, is it boggy there? Yeah. Yeah. You definitely get bogged in that. Maybe I should have just brought a boat for this track instead. <laughs> I'm not going to put my seatbelt on. Maybe I'll go second, but just really slow at second. No, I'll go first. deepest crossing of the trip so far. We've still got Nolan's Brook to go. That's the next crossing, which is the one where many cars get writ written off. And I've been hearing the last week on the way up here, there's been cars getting written off in that daily. So that's gonna be fun. The next crossing, there's been cars getting like flooded and destroyed in there like every day. <laughs> wow. It's like, uh, it's probably as, as deep as that, maybe slightly deeper, but it's like really boggy. Dude, what are our like card rounds? Oh, uh, we got we got the tow truck number over there. Yeah, I got the tow truck number, so we're good. Yeah, just write write that down in notes, mate. 
A snorkel is definitely the must-have mod if you're doing the tele track. And then breathers are always a good idea as well. So I've got diff transfer gearbox breathers just so they breathe up nice and high because otherwise they're trying to suck water in them down there super low when you're doing those deep crossings. And all those crossings, apart from Nolan's Brook, because it's still to come, it's maybe slightly different, but all the others, you can see I've crawled them all, I've had no problems at all. I don't think momentum really gains you anything, only sets you backwards. It just like smashing into the water. It only forces a heap of water up into the engine bay, and then you're looking at problems with fans, radiators, belts, uh, bearings in there, alternators, just a whole list of things. So that's why I'm in preservation mode, super duper slow. Finished up lunch, on to Nolan's Brook we go. Feeling slightly nervous about this upcoming crossing. Come to another one before, Nolan's Brook. I've got no idea what this is, but <laughs> we'll figure a way through it. Looks like everyone's going maybe through there. All right, it's not too deep. Put in uh, low range. I'm going back to sort of high range between the crossings, fair, fair bit of it, because I only need low range. Just gotta slowly drop in here. Then yeah, it's uh, not too soft in there, not too deep. This next one, it's not too bad. And it looks like we're through. And then, I don't know, well I think Nolan Brook's the next one, but I thought that last time and then we met that. <laughs> is he driving or is he floating? He's driving. <laughs> he's driving, he's driving. <laughs> is he gonna go or make it or is he gonna sink? That's so deep, they're just floating. Oh no. His engine's cut. I think his engine shut off. Maybe. Dude, there goes another car at Nolan's Brook. Dude, this is terrifying. <laughs> Yours? Oh, no. It was your idea. Oh no. I don't know what happened, but that's terrifying. That's a lot of water in that car. Hey? So uh, yeah, welcome to Nolan's Brook very soft in there and it's like about belly button deep. Well we have to like swim. Well, you have to, have to, but... When you have to swim across it that's when you know it's deep. Yeah I'm gonna start setting up a recovery plan here. Two soft shackles onto the bridle and then we'll probably hook a rope up on the other side. I'm also gonna knock some more out of air out of them. We're gonna get serious and go down to maybe six. And now it's there and back up over the other side. Well, so I have a chance of driving through it. It's so soft in there. Maybe I'll go eight. All right, that's eight feet high. I'm gonna do eight feet high all around. So we've got a car that's gonna strap us up and pull us across if need be. We'll probably just pre-connect the strap. I'll try to drive it as soon as I come to a stop, they'll pull. Yeah, that car right in front of me just drowned. They're towing, now towing it out of there, so. Wait, like a legitimate tow truck? Well, he's towing it up the road. I don't know what they're gonna do with it. He cooked his engine, he got water all through it, so doesn't instill confidence in me when I'm up next. How do you, how do you, how do you repair that? I don't know, <laughs> it might be the end of his car. Wow. So, got I got the inverter up off the floor there, so now everyone who always laughed at me for having wires and inverter just sitting on my back floor, well, they're not laughing now. Got everything up off of the floor. Got down to eight PSI. I put, don't know what else I need to do, don't nothing. Don't die! I'm ready to roll on you up. Ah, uh, yep. Give me a sec here. Just put that locker in. 
Alright, I'll start creeping down now. Cheers, thank you. Well, I uh, drove that all good. That just seemed to motor through that. That was first gear low, rear lock in, like I hardly accelerated at all. I just took it nice and easy through that. Um, and yeah, that 8 PSI, like let your tyres right down. And the grip they have at that is incredible. All right, that's Nolan Brook done and the last obstacle on the telly track. Well, that was deep. There's those tyres at 8 PSI, they're like donuts. But yeah, there was no tension on that strap at all, but you want it there just in case, like I just sort of considered, oh, should I not hook it up? But I thought if I don't make it, I'm sitting out there then trying to hook up straps, I'm going to regret that. <laughs> well, I can't never got any water in it either. Never got any water in it on all the telly crossings. It seems to have really good seals in it. I've never, ever had water come in that thing. Yeah. But obviously if you're sitting there for ages, it would, but yeah. Yeah, I, I, I got two photos and it was above the engine. Yeah, and um, you get um, no water um, in the seals. So that cruiser came through after me and he got stuck. He had to get pulled out. He basically just powered it straight into the middle, spun wheels and buried it. And you got to go slow, do not power it. It's crazy, it's like a wrecking yard over there. There's five cars that have all got cooked engines from that crossing, just, just from day four, is it? I was just trying to exaggerate. <laughs> So four, and just to show it's not like all Toyotas or Nissans or whatever, there's a Pajero, there's a Cruiser, there's a Discovery, and then there's a Nissan, what's the Nissan, Nissan wagon version of mine? The older one, I forget, but there's four brands of cars over there. This place is no joke. He's driving. He's going. He's going. Easy. All those guys behind us let their tyres right down as well and think they all drove it and just stick right. That's definitely the key. Here he goes, a camper trailer. Jerry is going to. He's still moving. Well, he won't drive it, but I think he'll make it. He's moving. His gas bottle's floating. <laughs> oh, he's going to drive it. Oh, we sort of hit it. We swam in Nolan's Brook for a bit, and then we hit it from there back out of the PDR. That's the last thing on the telly track. Um, and we punched it up to the Jardine. We just hit here at 4.35 because uh, you got to get across the ferry by five. So we just bought our return, you buy your return ticket here, 100 bucks return, just get across the Jardine River. But yeah, we're making it across. So we're up now into the final uh, top section of Australia now across this river. How cool is this, going across the Jardine River? We've got um, reception for the first time in a few days. There's no reception on the telly tracks. You have to keep that in mind. We've got reception for the first time in a few, in a few days. So we're just letting everyone know that we're still alive. Yeah. We've grabbed ourselves a camp spot here just as that sun's going down up along the Jardine River a little bit. No one around, which is nice. And we're on the edge of the river. This river has crocodiles in it, so we need to be careful. We're just going to go down for a look now to make sure there's none resting in this immediate area. Let's go down for a quick swim. You look for uh, any slide marks near the water as well. There's not that many up this end of it from what I know, which is nothing because I've never been here in my life. But from what I've heard, there's not many up, up this end, but there's heaps down uh, further close to the river mouth. But we're still we're a fair way from the river mouth up here, but yeah, be careful.
Beautiful spot here, heaps of uh, bird life around as well. Might get this fire going and make some dinner. We do have magnetic stubby coolers as well. People have always been asking me for these. Here's Kai's review on the magnetic stubby coolers. So kids, this is what we call a magnetic stubby cooler. We got the Tyler Thompson YouTube professional car drawing. I could not draw that good. I'm a review guy, not an artist. Um, so basically you put it and it's like magnetic. So, um, well, it's not magnetic. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> it's gotta go on the car. Well, this is an epic review. So basically, um, you can notice. Know, you gotta put it on the magnet. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And then, you know, you, you, know, you come back. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's not a great review, kids. Then you put it back on. With your drink, this is how it's filled. Yeah. And that's the review over. Beautiful night out here, so peaceful on the edge of this river. Woken up by a few birds this morning. One thing I've noticed is the further north we get, because we're, ne we're nearly at the top now, the hotter it gets. It's uh, about eight o'clock in the morning and it's pretty bloody hot up here. Look, that, that's what we call physics. If you get like higher, it gets better. Well, yeah, obviously the higher you get, but just it's like noticeably different each like hundred kilo, each hundred. Or it's like noticeably different each day as you progress further. Can't believe after all these years finally did the telly track. So we spent 48 hours on it. We started at late Monday afternoon, finished at late Wednesday afternoon, then just shot across the Jardine. Such an awesome track, like you can see why it's so popular and so many people like it. I guess the best part is all just those amazing creeks along it and then there's camping spots at all the creeks on either side of them. There's heaps of camping spots along the track. Northern section was definitely my favourite. That 48 hours seemed to be plenty, to plenty of time for us. We took it slow, we kept pulling up for swims along the way and stopped at all the crossings and all that sort of stuff. Like you definitely stay longer if you wanted to set up camp early on, but yeah, that was a good amount of time for us. I'd definitely say Nolan's Brook Crossing, the last one we did yesterday is the biggest challenge on the track. There's other like harder challenges, like gunshot and stuff, but you don't actually have to do them. There's tracks around them. Whereas at Nolan's Brook, there's not really an easy option. It's, uh, yeah, very deep water, I guess, unless you're here late in the season. So that was where we camped, not last night, the night before. Not at the Elliott Falls campground, but just back on the track here at the actual creek, there's a campground there, and then that was all what we did yesterday. Um, that's Nolan's Brook. There, and then basically from there we came up a bit and then shot out to the PDR up across the Jardine. Then today we got the final, I don't know how far it is, maybe 100 k's or so to the top. And then we're going to hit the northernmost point of Australia and we're going to check that out. And then we'll probably come across and do the five beaches run. We'll spend a couple of days up there exploring and checking out the sites and then we'll probably start heading back down of... I don't know how long we've got. I've got sort of eight to ten days to get back home to New South Wales. So we don't have a massive amount of time. This is sort of only a three-ish week trip up the top. Still well and truly worth doing. But yeah, we don't have weeks and weeks up here for taking it easy. We're just finishing packing up camp and then we're going to head to the top of Australia. Do a bit. I've always wondered what this looks like. So that's the Jardine River crossing further up stream from the ferry. Now you used to be able to drive across it, um, but they've put they've closed it off now. But you can like you can still go down there. 
Um, the last time, I remember like on Sam Isles videos, they all drove across it. That was quite a few years back now. <laughs> I remember a couple of them got badly bogged down the middle. Looks like a pretty deadly, deadly crossing, which is why they've closed it off. Plus there's crocs in that river. Like, and even walking down there into the start, you sort of weave your way through some swampy stuff there, then out onto the sandy river bed. You just don't really know what it's gonna be like. And I wouldn't want to walk down through all that to check it, check it out. But yeah, it says beware of crocodiles and riverbed can change frequently and stuff. Anyways, it's just interesting to see what the setup here was, but we'll keep uh, going out of here. We have made it, it's just after lunch, came up through Bemiga and got a bit of food. Well, it's muddy there. Got a bit of food and stuff in Bemiga. And the car park's just back around there and we're walking around the beach around to the northernmost point of Australia. Did it, Kai? Made it to the northernmost point of Australia. Round of applause. Now what? The enthusiasm is unbelievable. Now we drive 3,000 kilometres back home. We well, made it to the northernmost point of Australia. We got the photo down there next to the sign. It's pretty, pretty bloody windy out here today, and there's rain coming as well. But we made it. First time ever here. Can't believe it. There was a fair drive up here. We did a little bit over 3,000 kilometres and a few rough four-wheel drive tracks on the way, but. We made it. 2,500 kilometers on Instagram, uh, you're already wrong. Yeah, so we did a competition guess to see how many kilometers it would do this trip, and it's definitely going to be over 6,000. Another thing, another thing you, is, well, that wind. And just make a podcast. Make a podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, crossing river motivation podcast. And going into them fast only. Oh, that wind. And going in the, the Jardine River is the Jardine. The Jardin, the Jardin, the Jardin. So those, those two days, those, that 48 hours gave us, that 48 hours seemed to be plenty of time for us. Like we took it slow. Uh, I'd definitely say Nolan's Brook is the biggest. <clears throat> we'll spend a couple, we'll, we'll spend, I've always wondered what this looks like. So that's all. Oh, well, we have, well, we did it. <laughs> Made it to the northernmost point. We got our obligatory, is that the word? Obl obl well, 